Okay, today on Gear and Review, we're going to do something that's a little bit different than normal. Um, I never do product unboxings, just because typically I find product unboxing pretty, pretty boring. I mean, uh, the whole gist of it is, hey, look, here's a cardboard box. I wonder what's in it. And you already know. You look at the shape of the box, you go, oh, it's guitar, it's an amp, whatever. So, I don't know. I just, I've just never really seen the, just the, the, I don't know, the specialness of an unboxing video. The only reason that I'm shooting an unboxing video on this particular item is just because of, I guess, how near and dear uh, the product is to me. So, real quick piece of uh, backstory on, on this is um, when I first started playing clubs in Augusta, Georgia, around about, um, I guess, 92, 93, um, my first real guitar, I got lucky and I found a RG560 or 570. I'm not sure. It was either the 560 or the 570. Um, and it was great. I mean, I played that guitar for probably almost on and off for the 10 years that I was um, in Augusta. That this year, they have not only released the RG550 Genesis, the 2018 RG550 Genesis, let me get it right. Not only did they release that one this year, but they released this one in a lefty model as well. Yes, because see, I would have bought any one of the other reissues of the 550, I would have bought had they done a left-handed version, and they didn't. Um, but, they did release this one in Lefty. Um, this one is more of a true reissue. And we'll get into that when we uh, get to the guitar. But let's pull her out. Okay, so let's get to it. <laughs> Sorry, that takes a lot to get this thing actually ready to present. Okay, this is in the, in desert yellow. Another cool reason for wanting this, as well as when I did uh, do RG guitars back in the 90s. Um, up until around about 95, 96, Majority of the left-handed um, RG style guitars that came out left-handed were black. It being cheaper to manufacture um, black guitars, uh, and there wasn't a at that particular point in time. I'm not going to say there wasn't a market for it, but they didn't necessarily understand that the market of left-handed guitar players wanted something other than black. And this was something. This was uh, something that was done across the board with a lot of guitar manufacturers. So you can imagine. Back then, I had a lot of black guitars and white, black and white, but not a lot of color. So, the fact that they did this in the desert yellow made it also something that I had to have. And also being the big, huge Steve Vai fan, and if that one of his gems was in the desert yellow, there you have it. So. And just like, now here are the things that made this guitar different. And the thing that is confusing a lot of people, because a lot of people go, oh, well, it's not really, you know, where does this guitar fall out in the line? It's not really an, a prestige guitar. Well, it is and it isn't. I'm going to tell you why it is. 
it is to be considered of level with the prestige guitars because the original RG line, not what it turned into later when they started dividing up where all construction would be done, but the original line when all the RGs were coming out of the Japanese factory, those guitars are what would initially become later in life the prestige line. The prestige line back then stood for the guitars that came out of the Japanese factory. I mean, not then, but later. The guitars that came out of the Japanese factory were considered the prestige guitars, or the guitars that were just considered better because of the factory they came out of. Um, but being that this is a reissue, back when this guitar came out, there were no prestige markings on the uh, headstock. In fact, there weren't even, uh, there wasn't even the word RG series. The only thing the headstock said was Ibanez, just like this headstock. The only thing this headstock says is Ibanez. It doesn't say prestige or anything else. Um, and as you can quite noticeably see it's right there on the back of the headstock the guitar stop moving made in japan is there and made in japan is also on the neck plate now here's something that's different on this guitar that wasn't on the original rgs like the one that i had back in the day is this there was no see if you could see this this is a five-piece Super Wizard neck, which is what comes on the majority of the prestige level instruments. Um, the original RGs were just a one-piece. They were a one-piece maple neck with a scarf joint on it. Also, the originals had a... Um, where the, oh, you can't see, I got it too far up. On the originals, right here, this, there would be two bolts coming all the way through. Um, and that was a bad design because there were a lot of uh, broken, snapped headstocks um, that were caused by the fact that the integrity of the neck was compromised by putting drilling holes all the way through the wood. So they have fixed that with two things. One, like I said, not drilled all the way through. And two, they've used a five-piece maple neck. So anyway, let's get back to where we were. Comes with a little general maintenance book. <clears throat> the guitar does not come with a case. However, I did buy one because I knew I would need a case to keep it in. Um, of course, you know, it comes with the regular goodies full set of Allen wrenches, truss rod, adjustment key. Most importantly, the whammy bar, nice little Ziploc bag, I like that. Oh, that's cool. Replacement garments for this, for when it gets worn out, so that you can keep the tremolo arm nice and stiff for an extended uh, amount of time. Comes in a Team J-Craft printed bag. Cool. Okay, so I'm not sure where I left off, but let's start back. Five piece maple walnut uh, super wizard neck. It's very thin. This is not the neck that was on the original 550s. Um, the original 550s they had not or had not got to the point of making the neck quite as thin as they do on modern day Ibanezes back then so that is one of um one of the upgrades that they did to this one was they added the uh, five piece super walnut neck um 
They are Grover tuners. Uh, maple fretboard. The back of the neck is a satin finish. Um, I don't remember if my original 550 was a satin finish or a lacquered finish. I almost want to say that my original 550 was a lacquered finish, but I'm not sure. So I don't I don't want to say because I'm not sure. That's been a that's been a few years ago. Um, they use the original pickups, the V7, S1, V8, uh, five-way mega switch, one volume, one tone. Uh, it's a Ibanez. It's the Edge, not the Edge Pro. The Ibanez Edge tremolo system. The only thing that was different is I believe that the original 550 still had the license, the license by Floyd Rose stamp on the tremolo. I do believe that was on the original 550 because at one point they did use that. <coughs> And then they, they, I guess they advanced the design enough on its own where they didn't need the licensing anymore or whatever. I'm not really sure how that worked. But um, recessed Floyd cavity, nice. Um, uh, the little contour here for your hand, which is nice. Belly cut. The uh, stamped neck plate, and the uh, neck plate is stamped, made in Japan, as is the back of the neck. The serial number also indicates that it's made in the Japan factory. So, yeah, it's um, it's really nice. It, uh, I have to see what I think about this neck as opposed to my original uh, five. 560, Now, it's also to be noted, when you're looking at the uh, 560, 570, and uh, I think there was one, the 760 or 750, uh, all came out in that time era, and I hear people say things like, oh, one is a much better quality than the other one. All those guitars that came out in that time period, quality were, the quality was identical. What was different was the aesthetic quality of the guitar. The 550s were the maple fretboard with pick guard. That 700 series was basically the exact same guitar. It had a rosewood fretboard and shark tooth inlays on the fretboard, and the fretboard was bound. But that's all aesthetic. That has nothing to do with fretboard radius or where the neck was cut or made or anything, uh, and there may be a there may have been a difference in the uh, in the pickups. None of them came with Demarzio pickups. I'm pretty sure at that particular point in time, nobody none of them was uh, rocking the Demarzios in just the flat out RG series. Now, let's address the thing where people are like, "This it's not a prestige level guitar." Okay, let's address that real quick. The reason that this guitar, like I said, it shipped in a prestige box. The goodie packet that comes with the guitar is in a J-Craft bag. The reason that the guitar does not have any prestige markings is because it is a reissue of the 550s that came out in the 80s. There was no prestige model in the 80s. So, as I pointed out earlier, as a result, there's no prestige indication here because there was no prestige indication on the original. And there's no RG series written here because there was no RG series written on the originals. Another reason is, is because prestige level guitars uh, generally do not come with the Ibanez um, V7, V8, and S1 series pickups, a uh, prestige level guitar would typically come uh, with either DiMarzio pickups or the newer OEM Ibanez pickups. Uh, 
this guitar came with the original pickups that they had in the guitar back then. With the exception, the original get the original pickups actually had the V7, the V8, and the S1 were actually written on the pickups. Uh, these are not, so that is something another something different is done. So there's no there's no marking on the pickup. There's no stamp on the tremolos. So that's two things, and of course the upgraded neck. Those are the things that are different from this as opposed to the original. They're offering a prestige level instrument for if you're right-handed under $1,000, if you're left-handed right at $1,000. And they're uh, which is cheaper than any prestige level guitar that they have offered in the past. Of course, they were going to have to make some concessions in order to hit that price point. And that concession being your case. Um, your case and the fact that it used old OEM pickups that they made. That's what got the price down, in my opinion. Uh, but that does not affect the quality of the instrument at all. Now, I'm okay with it. It didn't bother me at all because I bought a 2900 or 2875 uh, Sir uh, Modern Pro. And it came with a padded gig bag. So if I got a padded gig, gig bag with a $2,800 guitar, then I'm totally okay with buying a case for $1,000. That's just my mindset. People that don't uh, mess with those boutique companies will probably go, oh, well, they don't agree. But if you're if you're into Sir Guitars, you know that um, you have to spend X and X amount of money on a Sir uh, upwards of $3,500 before you get a hard shell case. And anything below that, you're getting, you're getting gig bags unless you pay extra for it. So... That's something to, uh, that, I mean, I just put that out there. So it's not really that big a deal to me that this didn't come with a, uh, with a, with a case or a gig bag. Uh, because if it came with a gig bag, I probably I would still wind up having to get a case anyway. Because I'm not really a gig bag person. So, yeah. Um. Now, here's what I did find though with some of the people that were saying that uh, the guitar. Uh, sucked or I, uh, what I think is happening one there are three different 550s out there so a before you give someone an opinion about what you think about the guitar make sure <coughs> you are referencing the 2018 Genesis 550 because the 2018 the 2018 Genesis 550 is a different guitar than the anniversary edition guitar that they issued out around 2005, which is also a different guitar than the regular RG series 550. Those are three different 550s out on the market. So let me, re let me recap that for you. There's an anniversary 550 prestige stamped guitar. That's one that came out in 2005 and it was like the 20 or 25th anniversary of the RG. That guitar sold with a hard shell case. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that one also has the holes drilled all the way through for the um, for the locking nut at the top of the uh, uh, at the top of the neck, and that one also I'm not a hundred percent sure which tremolo or which pickups come in that one, and I'm not sure about the neck. But that's one. That's one of the RG five fifties. And then there is the one that we are talking about, the 2018 Genesis 550. 
And I put the year F out there because it's very important because there were changes made to the guitar on the 2018 edition that are specific to this build. So, and another thing to, to take into consideration too is if, you, if you're reading something and someone is saying something about the 550 and it's negative, and they gave their report on the 550 before around March and April. It's not this 550. 